Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. Today I'll be teaching you how to achieve this animation in After Effects. I've attached the working file in the description. Feel free to download it and follow along. Without further ado, let's jump right in. First, I want to talk about the storyboard. This is roughly the storyboard that we have for this animation. You can see we got these scenes here. Each scene is a bit different. I want to use match cut to transition between these scenes. And then I want to use this main dot as a main object. It's going to go through all these different scenes. So you can see each scene will have a dot as the main object. And then this main object is going to trigger all the other movement of other elements and other shapes in my animation. And at the end, you can see this is the symmetrical layout that we have, and uh, it's gonna have different colors. We're gonna add glow to it. It's gonna look pretty cool. After the storyboard, I wanna talk about the animation. Let's go to After Effects. Let's go to the animation only composition. I already animated the whole thing. And we can go through how I animated these animation here. If we go to each element in the first scene, this is a main object. Let's hit U on the keyboard to show the animation. All we did is a position change of the ball bouncing a couple times. And that's all the keyframe I have on this main element. And if I hit U on the keyboard to show the keyframes of the other elements, for these ones, once the main dot come down, hit the square, the pink square, it's going to trigger the pink square to do some rotation changes and some scale changes and some position changes as well. So basically, this is going to be a bounce and then hit on the square and then the yellow circle is going to go all the way down to drag everything, almost like a pole is pulling everything towards itself so that we have all these different elements having a position change as well as scale change for these outline square to have this echo effect. So that's basically my first scene. If I play the first scene, it's basically two different movement, one bounce and one pull. If you look at the animation, bounce, pull, and then we're going to transition to second scene, bounce, pull. That's good for the second scene. This is my main dot. If I hit you on the keyboard, it's have a skill change. I want to use a match cut. You can see from the first scene, everything is kind of zooming up and then I will have this main dot zooming out as well. It's gonna scale up and then it's gonna rotate a bit. The other two elements come into the scene. We have scale, rotation, and then the position change for this main dot. The main dot is gonna move up to the center of the frame. while we have these two rings coming up from scale zero all the way up to 700. So it's becoming bigger and bigger. The rotation is manipulated by this null object so that we have these two rings rotating around the center. And then once we have the ring settle in place, we're gonna have these two rings pull from each other on the opposite direction. It's going to make the inner circle smaller while we have the two rings leaving the scene. And now we have a last null object in the second scene controlling all the layers, doing a position change from left to right to transition to the third scene, which is a match cut. Again, you can see these two circles are in the exact position with the exact same movement, all going to the right so that we have a match cut cutting to the third scene where we have this circle hitting the wall in this area and it's going to be broken down into three different circles they're going to just bounce around in the area here doing a bunch of moves and then go up again coming together as one object in the center now we have all these different outlined rings coming in in different color and with a rotation controlled by the null object 
as we rotate, we're going to transition to the last scene where we have a match cut again with the same rotation and everything, all these elements in the last composition just come out to form this layout. And then we have the final last move where everything just comes out and then these should go in the center, disappear so that the animation is going back to the first scene. Let's see the whole animation. That's roughly our animation. That looks pretty good. I already have some of the colors on here. Although these colors are not very well thought out, but uh, they can definitely be improved. We can also add some grading color to make the whole theme more polished. The next thing I want to talk about is the color as well as the grading color. Let's go to the next composition. In this scene, you can see my main object, this square here. What I did is I added a layer style gradient overlay. And then in the overlay, so this is my color combination for the gradients. No animation is changed from the first animation composition. We only did a color change and added some grading color. Everything is going to come down. We have a bounce and a pull in the first scene. And then over here, you can see there's some color variations on my outline square. So the way I did that is I animated a hue and saturation effects. So I animated the channel range of hue saturation and that's how I get this random color change to make the whole first scene more excited and with more energy. So that's the color change that we did for the first scene and then the second scene, same thing, we added a gradient color in the main object and added some color animation on the rings here as well as the square elements over there. And I also changed the animation a little bit because I feel like the second scene is lacking some tension. So that's why I want to use these two squares come together to touch this little circle to add some tension while we transition out to the third scene where we have the circle shooting to the right. It's almost as if these two squares is pushing the circle to the right where it shoot out and then hit the wall and broke into three pieces. So that's kind of the idea behind the circle moving to the right. And you can see whenever my circle touches the wall here, I want to give it a reaction to the touch or the hit so that whenever the circle hit the wall, I did a color change on the outside square. Once we have the circle coming into the center together, we have another type of echo coming in with different colors, and then we have a null object controlling. So these are my little triangles with outline, and then they're all in different color. Everything is controlled with this null in the center so that we can do a rotation change of the null to control all these little triangles. As, as we are rotating to the right, we're also transitioning to the last scene with the match cut again. And the last scene, I didn't add too much animation on the last scene. All I did is just make everything falling into position. And then after settling down for a couple frames, it's gonna move again. Everything just going to the opposite direction and then everything comes together to form this little diamond shape in the center to go back to the first scene where we have the first elements as this diamond shape. And now we have the animation and the color. For the last scene, I really like all these gradient color in the last scene. Maybe we could do more with the gradient color, but this is the animation and the color that I have. I'm pretty happy with how it looks now. That's good. 
Before we go to the next technique, please give me a like on this video if you find it helpful. Your like is really important for me and this channel to grow to be able to reach more people and help more people. After we added the animation, we just need to add a glow effect on the very top with an adjustment layer. You can also add the After Effects default glow, but I found the glow is looking much better. However, it's a paid plugin. It's not free. I can show you what it looks like with the Deep Glow plugin. I didn't change anything. All the color are staying the same from my last composition. I just added a Deep Glow with 500 radius and then one point exposure. Let's see what it looks like with the glow effect on. I like how it looks overall. It just gave our animation a lot more premium look and um, especially with all the glows, it just makes it so satisfying. Maybe the glow is too much at the end here. I can tone it down by just making this number smaller, maybe 0.6. So that is not overexposed. After we have the glow effects, we can also, we can also add some other stuff like the echo effect that we can do on these main dots so if I find the main DOS, which is layer four here, let's add an echo effect. Once I add the echo effect, I need to change these number to 0 0.002 and then maybe make five copies. So when the ball goes down, maybe eight copies, it's gonna have a trail following our circle. So that almost like a smear effect. I like how that looks. But in terms of echo effects, you don't have to add too much echo. It's just, just a couple echo is gonna look pretty good. However, I don't want it look something like this where the ball just like all separated. I wanna see how we can fix that. If I change this number even smaller and then maybe make five copies, that looks better. It's gonna give us some smear effect. Now I can just copy this echo effect and put it onto any layer that I like. Even like this main square, we can even do an echo on here. Yeah, that looks pretty good and then maybe those little circles goes around. Let's add some echo. Now it's changing the color. So let's change the echo operator to maximum so that we can maintain the color that we had before. And now you can see there's some shape change around the shapes. It's not circle anymore. It's almost like a cell animation where we have some organic shapes instead of just a round object making the whole animation more organic. After we add the echo in the first scene, you can already see the difference, right? It's making our animation much more organic. That looks pretty good. And the last thing I want to talk about is the chromatic aberration, of course. If we go to the chromatic aberration tab, you can see we have three different layers and each one is having one color alpha channel. The first one is red and then the second one is green and the third one is blue. Everything is put onto add mode so that we can change the position property of these layers in order to get a chromatic aberration. If I change the position by too much, you can see these overlays between the layers. However, I only want to have a little bit of offsets so that it's giving me a ton of other color information. I think that looks pretty cool. After the chromatic aberration, this is our final animation. Let's take a look.
Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, please leave me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. We will be publishing more After Effects tutorials like this every single week. In addition, we also have a free exclusive community where motion designers hang out and learn from each other. Click the link in the description to join our exclusive community. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.